So I'm going to show you how to arrange the best habitat for tropical orchids, where they will feel right at home, like in a tropical forest. And we have shown already in our videos how to create conditions for sick orchids for rehabilitation in a vase. But as a rule, only one or a maximum of two orchids can be placed in a vase. So what do you do when you have a lot of them? I decided to arrange a terrarium. And for this, I need a spacious aquarium. Mine is about 250 liters. I will also need aquarium stones of any color. Or if you don't have this, you can use river sand or fine river gravel. I distribute the stones evenly along the bottom, and then I decorate the background with decorative driftwood and pieces of dead pine bark, which can be found and collected in a forest or in a park. You can add decorative twigs or even hemp, beautiful stones, any decorative material that you have on hand. Then I will take pieces of the pine bark, and very often there are holes that pests make in the bark, and if they are none, that you can make them yourself. And through these holes, I am attaching the orchid with a piece of thread or fishing line. Of course, I take the orchid out of the pot in advance, and I wrap it lightly in a small piece of dried hypnum moss, and then arrange it in the aquarium. If an orchid has damaged or rotten roots, this means that it suffers from waterlogging. It is common when an orchid grows in a bark or in a pot with a lot of drainage holes and we don't even water it too often that the orchid still suffers and the roots still rot. But why does this happen? The reason is very simple. Because the roots of the orchids should not be in the pot at all. This is unnatural. If you're an attentive person, you've probably noticed that the most healthy orchids, as a rule, have many aerial roots, the ones that grow out of the pot. And if all the roots are jammed in the pot, then they will suffocate and suffer from waterlogging, even for no particular reason. This is a difficult concept to grasp until you understand how orchid roots work. The most important thing is the dead cells of the rhizoderm which we call velamen. It is velamen that is responsible for capturing and retaining water, and it also protects the roots from drying out. So therefore, when the roots are outside of the pot, the orchids form a thicker layer of the velamen, and the roots that are in the air are more protected. When they are hidden in the pot, in the substrate with high humidity, then the velamen is formed very thin and weak, and the roots with such cultivation are more tender and are more quickly exposed to diseases and decay. Therefore, the roots of the orchids sometimes need to dry out and to be in the air. But how can this be done without upsetting the balance and not overdrying the already flimsy waterlogged roots and not ruining the orchid? I use containers for this purpose, both for the rehab of the sick orchids and for growing orchid keiki or new roots. You can watch a video on our channel about that. So take any unwanted aquarium and it'll perfectly do the job. Maintaining the increased humidity of the air and not the substrate around the aerial roots while the orchid roots remain dry but won't dry out. I will create conditions that are as close as possible to the natural conditions and this will help me heal the roots of the orchids. No matter how I attach the orchid, I make sure that most of the roots remain in the air outside, and for a decorative effect, I will plant a few stems of regular indoor ivy in some small pots of garden soil and hide them between the driftwood and the bark. Heater ivy is not a whimsical plant, and it will feel good in these conditions and may even attach with its aerial roots to the bark and snags with its suckers. On the bark and branches, I will use only some dried, preserved moss, but at the bottom of the terrarium, I will put my own live sphagna moss, which I have been growing for several months. You can watch a video on our channel on how to do that. I pour a little bit of osmosis water, just enough to lightly cover the pebbles at the bottom for the moss and other plants that coexist well with mosses. 
An excellent decoration for the bottom, along with the sphagnum moss, is club moss, marsh grasses, cloudberry leaves, but this is not necessary. Live moss is the most important inhabitant, as it forms a complex symbiotic or mutualistic relationship with orchids. The moss itself is home to many microorganisms, namely those that can inhabit velamen and are directly involved with nitrogen fixation and the absorption of nutrients by orchids. Useful microbes of fungi, soil bacteria, and protists live in moss, therefore I prefer moss. But I think in the absence of moss, you can try to plant other plants, preferably wetland inhabitants. And they, as a result of their respiration, will provide a high, stable, high humidity for orchids. Moss also grows quickly in good light and has an excellent decorative effect. Illumination with UV lamps is recommended if there's not enough light. You do not need to pour more water than just to cover the stones and ensure contact with the moss. Otherwise, it can provoke excessive putrefactive processes in the presence of a moderate water level. This usually does not happen though because sphagnum itself has antibacterial properties and can perfectly regulate due to its own microbiota. To extinguish any unwanted Putrefactive processes, however, you can use a very light solution of potassium permanganate. Not too much, though, as to not disrupt the delicate microbiota. I never cover the top to ensure good ventilation and prevent any excessive mold growth. Such a terrarium is a wonderful display idea for your home and office. So thank you so much for watching. Leave any comments or questions you have below, and don't forget to subscribe.